Hello, welcome to this episode of Rich Insights. I'm Don Rich, Head of Investments for Esoteric Capital Markets. Today's topic is on diversification, or really lack of diversification. All right, diversification today is at the mercy of the mega caps, right? It's at the mercy of the tech mega caps. So we know from basic investments, right? Portfolio theory, portfolio construction says you should diversify, right? Don't put all your app, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And you're supposed to diversify across the asset classes, right? Across stocks, bonds, commodities, and so forth. And you're supposed to diversify within each one of those asset classes. Well, the problem we have today is with the latter, right? Trying to diversify within uh, the asset class. Uh, now, particularly, I'm talking about the equity asset class, right? Because correlations across uh, the, the various equity uh, uh, investment indices are the highest they've ever been. All right, let's take a look at this. As we jump to the chart today here, what we're looking at here in this chart is three different correlations with the S&P 500. All right, they're all with the S&P 500. All right, so this chart goes back for 20 years. All right, we want a fair bit of history here. And we calculate these correlations using historical data, right? Using the last one year's worth of historical data to uh, give us a correlation estimate today. All right, and you can see the three different uh, correlations we have here. We have in the blue line, the uh, correlation uh, of the S&P with the uh, NASDAQ. All right, blue is, is with the NASDAQ. The brown line is the S&P with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And then the green line is the S&P with the MSCI World. All right. Now, first notice where we're at today. If we look at this brown line today and compare that to history, the brown line, again, is the correlation between S&P 500 and the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average is at 99%. 99%. And it's the highest it's ever been, uh, again, for the last 20 years. But the Dow is not alone. If we look at these other ones, right? Look at the green line, look at the blue line. Both of those are about 97.5% today. And if we bring that back uh, in history, we'll see both of those are also at the highest they've ever been. Wow. Wow. Well, what do we do with this information? If the correlations are the highest ever, well, that tells us the diversification course is the least uh, effective ever, right? The diversification is worse uh, that, that it's ever been. Now, part of this, part of this is due to the coronavirus, right? When we get dislocations, all things tend to go down together, right? It's a sy systemic shift, a, a sy systemic shock, and Obviously, if everything's moving down together, then the correlations uh, tend to increase and they tend to go to one. All right. That's, that's part of what's going on uh, uh, right now. But remember, <clears throat> that pullback from the coronavirus only lasted about a month, right? It was essentially from February 20th to March 20th. And we're looking at a year's worth of look back here. All right. So we can't, we can't uh, attribute everything to the virus. We won't know for sure, uh, you know, until we get uh, more data going forward as to how much we can attribute to the virus. But we know it played part, you know, it, it, it had an effect. It, it had an effect. How much, we don't know yet. But uh, the end result's the same. The end result is that there's less diversification available today than there's ever been for the last 20 years. All right, so now, why is that? Why is that? Well, let's go back here to the charts here. What we're looking at on this chart is the uh, constituents of each of the four uh, major in indices. All right. So we got the top 10 companies underlying the S&P 500. 
the uh, top 10 members underlying NASDAQ, the top 10 for the Dow, and the top 10 for the MSCI world. All right. The first thing I want to point out is that notice with the S&P 500, the top 10 members make up 26% of the index. Wow. There's 505 different companies in the S&P 500. And the top 10 make up over a quarter of the index. That is just amazing. It's even worse so when we go to the NASDAQ. Right? The top 10 members of the NASDAQ, 54%. Right? Over half of the index is just due to the top 10. All right. Now we jump down here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Again, the top 10, 56%. All right, very similar uh, to the NASDAQ. And in the MSCI world, the MSCI world has something like 1,200 companies in it. But the top 10, which are mainly um, uh, US-based firms, account for 16%. All right. That's, that's our first indication, right? Is, is that the diversification uh, is, is far less because these indices are really being dominated by the mega caps right now. They are just being destroyed in terms of diversification, right? The mega caps are just destroying the diversification because the index goes up when the mega caps go up and it goes down when they go down. Uh, the other stuff is having far less influence than it used to. All right, let's go back into the charts here. Now that we got, uh, I, again, the percentages in mind here. Let's take a look. The year-to-date performance here of the S&P was down 6, right? Down 6%. Well, the Dow was down 10, a little over 10%. You can see here the MSCI world was down, let's call it 9.5, right? Down about 9.5. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind with the MSCI world, we're looking at these returns in dollars, in U.S. dollars. All right, so we're looking at these returns from the perspective of a U.S.-based investor. So about one and a half to two percent of this negative nine and a half percent loss is due to the currency. All right, so it's not all just price price declines here. There's also a, a, a currency effect, right? Some dollar strength has, has occurred this year. Okay. <clears throat> So we are seeing some differences uh, between the three, but they're all, all obviously uh, moving together. Now, the one notice, notable, notable exception is the NASDAQ. Right? The NASDAQ is up almost 5% on the year. All right. Now, why is that? What's going on here? Well, to answer that, all we have to do is look under the covers. Let's look at the individual names. Here we are with the uh, S&P 500. The largest uh, name is Microsoft right at five and a half percent Apple Amazon Facebook Google all right those are the top five or top six because Google has two listings right uh, the class A shares and the class C shares right but again Microsoft Apple Amazon Facebook and Google for the S&P 500 now let's go over to the NASDAQ the biggest ones Apple Microsoft Amazon Facebook Google Let's go to the MSCI world. The biggest components, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google. I believe I'm starting to detect a pattern developing here, people. Right? These large mega caps are just dominating, dominating the weights of all of these indices. All right. So what, what accounts for the slight, uh, uh, the, the, the difference we're seeing in performance this year? Well, let's start over here with the Dow. Dow, you see, there's Apple here, uh, there's Microsoft, and there's uh, uh, Visa. All right, we've got some overlap here uh, with the S&P 500. But what's really going on with the Dow is what's not in the Dow, all right? What's not in the Dow. You don't see Amazon, you don't see Facebook, you don't see Google, right? Those are the names that are not in the Dow, and that's why it is performing the worst. All right, let's look at the S&P now versus uh, NASDAQ. The S&P is down 6% while the NASDAQ is up 5 What's the difference here? Well, again, once we get out of the tech names, you'll see some of the big financials in the S&P 500. Berkshire Hathaway, which is down about 18.5% in the year. 
JP Morgan, right? The, the uh, large banks are in here. It's down 27% on the year. Those uh, 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 do not show up in the NASDAQ, right? The financials are not in uh, the NASDAQ to the same magnitude. So it's all, it's all tech, 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 right? The more tech you've had, the, the better off you've ended up. All right, so what do we do with all this information? Well, first of all, you know, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. We don't know how long uh, the, the, the correlations are going to be this high, right? Uh, we know it's going to take a while because these mega caps are, you know, uh, some very uh, good companies. They're, they're very successful. And, and that's not going to change in a heartbeat. So in the short term, yes, uh, you're going to be impaired uh, by, by trying to, to diversify. It's just not going to work. It's not going to be very effective, right? It's, everything's going to go up if the mega caps go up, and everything's going to go down if the mega caps go down. That's the world we live in uh, today, and we just have to get used to it, right? As we move, uh, you know, further and further down the path to, to this digital economy, it, it, it's just tech, right? Tech, 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 the, the growing influence of tech. All right, and that's just something we have to get used to. We, we have to get used to it in our daily lives. We have to get used to it in our investment portfolios as well. All right, so that's our key message uh, today is, is just the importance of, of these uh, tech mega caps. So uh, I'm Don Rich. You've just experienced a rich insight. I hope you've enjoyed it. May your beer be colder than the company you keep. We'll talk again soon. Thank you.